send him to walk in registration. Where they harvest the sunflowers so you can get them drying off quicker. Uh, you know, that stuff makes you go crazy. Uh, so what I'm going to do is let me just start quickly. Quickly. Go to the top so you understand. Again, I was comparing um, a incorporated using uh, like I was talking to the ladies down below, you know, it, it seems like some people have unlimited <coughs> more. But my farm is I have full blood limousine cattle, so I have that bring into winter, and I have manure available for my hay. So I actually manure my hay crops, but I don't have unlimited. And I also have piled manure from horses, which can be used specifically for uh, my pastures. But I don't have nitrogen sources for my sunflowers or other things. So I could, I'll use green manure specifically, and I would side dress with an organic, some, uh, organic fertilizer I use for trail uh, if I need it. So my main cover crop for the sunflowers is rye and forage peas. So the rye uh, should be planted probably uh, you should, if you're going to do roll down, we'll get to that. Should be about three and a half bushels per acre. Uh, you can get away with two bushels per acre, and then with peas, the peas anywhere from 50 to 100 pounds per acre of forage peas. Forage the rye planted in the fall, and the forage peas are are drilled in the beginning of March. You could try to do Australian with Austrian winter peas in the same time you do the rye, and this would have been a great winter for that because at least not my way. I don't know about up here. Well, this is in New York. It's probably good. Dry. If you get a really, really cold winter, you may lose your peas, so then they have to replant. So you have to take a camp, camp, you're gambling with the cost. But there is an Austrian winter pea as well. So here we have a, a nutrient scavenger of the rye, and we have a legume, nitrogen fixating legume, planted together. It's a good combination because the peas you can use the rye as a trellis. So this was done two years ago. And as each year goes along, you wonder why you're going farming, because the weather becomes more and more extreme and brutal. Uh, this summer was also, uh, you know, it's hard to say, but last July, in Pennsylvania, this past July in Pennsylvania was an extreme big drought, and then we had just rain, 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 rain. This was also a droughty summer. Yeah. So we planted, we had five replications of the non-incorporated and incorporated sunflower. Okay, so incorporated rye and peas and non-incorporated rye and peas. This would be used in the roll down fashion like you're going with corn and soybeans. And then we would plant the sunflowers in the no-till drill like we went. Now this summer, this planting year was insane because it was warm and the rye grew like bad out of hell. Uh, so what happened was the rye got so tall, as you can see here, <laughs> this is like, it's just, it just grew so crazy that it got ahead of was the thing. So I had to mow the rye and the peas to rotivate them. Okay, because I'm using a machio rotivator, which is there, right? Um, and so that wasn't really planned plan was to mow it, and then about roughly 10 days, uh, about a week later, we motivated it. And then we tried to get that ahead in the time so that we did everything at one time. So we planted at the exact same time the peas in the incorporated and the peas in the non-incorporated thing. So we were getting rid of a, a variable in all there, OK? Um, so after we did the. The, uh, the mowing and the rotivating, and we're all just waiting, because you basically after you rotivate the rye and the peas, you have roughly, you want to plant, you can plant anywhere from a week to two weeks right into that, okay? And there you have a difference now between nutrient dynamics, basically nutrient dynamics, meaning this is gonna be a fast release of your green manures, and this is gonna be a slow release of your green manures, right? So this is going to form a mat that's going to be for weed control as 
as well as this, which is the main function of the roll down, also because it's also a, it's a no-till, so you have the benefit of preventing erosion as well. But this would form a mat and a slow release of nutrients. So in this cover crop, we'll get there. So we have it mowed, rotivated. We have them all ready to go. We're waiting for one thing for roll down. If anybody does this, is you're waiting for the anthesis stage or the flowering stage of the rye. When you hit that stage, that's when you're supposed to do the roll down and the crushing of the rye and the dyes. And then you can plant right into that. So this is not my equipment. This is a, uh, another organic farmer. This is, but he had the, the, so the cool thing about this is he, he, he was crushing and planting all in one pass. So really nice. There may be some issues with that, by the way, uh, the Rodale's right down the road from me. Uh, I mean, Ro Rodale's a great organization, somewhat schizophrenic, but it has uh, one good thing is, uh, well, Jeff Moyer's one that does the roll down stuff. It's maybe this may, there may be some playing around with this because as everybody remembers, River Rye has that uh, homeo, uh, what do you call it, the um, heliopathic effect. And maybe there's, so anyway, we'll let that go for the time being. This is really nice though, the crush and plant right once. I also use the exact same planter, even though it's a no-till one to plant the, so that we got rid of another variable that you have the exact same planter. So the anthesis stage of the rye, we were rolling and crushing down the peas in the rye and planting directly into that. We're roughly going seven and a half inches apart, around 28,000 seeds per acre on 30 inch rows. sunflowers as an oil crop, not because it's very pretty, which it is, is because two major reasons. Number one is greater than 90% of soybeans and canolas are GMO crops. And I do not want to have anything to do with GMO crops. So sunflowers they haven't touched. So sunflowers, another benefit to sunflowers, non-GMO, they're also here, not down there. So as an organic farmer, the biggest hassle would be weeds. So you have to have that weed control. So I don't want weed seeds getting into my, so the combine header is higher. So I don't have, hopefully you try to keep. So the goal is to get those sunflowers up quick, get them up high, because I'm mainly gonna fight the late summer angle uh, weeds like uh, ragweed or something. So we're trying to nail that. And you want it, it's nice to have that up higher so you have less seed uh, contamination. So this is when we're done. So we have, again, uh, replication, replication uh, uh, of in one field, and they were random, random, randomly uh, computed. Some, the next field over, you actually had two of the roll down beside each other. Uh, you have the uh, incorporated and non incorporated. Yeah. So what, what date was this that you planted about? Uh, this was uh, in May. This is, uh, I have it on here. Like, Two years ago, so yeah, I can look, I can tell you. But it's here you want to get your sunflowers. I did a, I have a whole other PowerPoint on sunflower. The main thing is you sunflowers you in at least in Pennsylvania you would plant late late May. If you, you can go into mid up to mid June. Uh, the later you plant, the less yield you'll get and less oil. I have a guy who does brings his barley, does his barley a Mennonite, does his barley, and he then harvests his barley or wheat or whatever, and then he plants like in July issue with him though is he has to dry them, right? Because he's going to be harvesting. I'm harvesting in September. So uh, I harvest in September, I want to harvest out of the field and dry in the field. I don't want to dry them and then I can replant my rye, rye or peas and etc. in the, if I lost your peas in this fall again to do another crop, okay? So I always have my soils covered with a cover crop. <coughs> so what happened? Okay, this is one problem that happened, is a certain percentage of the peas didn't die. Okay, so that was totally unexpected from my point of view, because 
if you ever deal with peas in a garden or something, you just look at them and they die. I mean, you touch them. You know, <laughs> so I was, these are 40 10, well, I think 40 10 or 40 20 welter peas, forage peas. So the peas didn't die. So there could be some, I'll talk to some reasons about that. So that was the first thing that was going on with the, the non-incorporated. So you therefore had the competition of the peas, some of with the sunflowers. Now granted, the, they would be nitrogen fixating, but they'd also, they eventually got killed and died anyway, probably around June, yeah. in, June in the June zone. Uh, this is a sunflower vegetative growth. Um, Incorporated, and this is a non incorporated. You have a map here again of the uh, of the rye and the peas. Uh, what was I going to say? So, um, so in our experiment, what we did is we took leaf, vegetative growth from leaves uh, at around, uh, I have to always look it up, it's two years ago. We took leaf tissue analysis uh, at 32 days and it's after the first cultivation, 32 days and 62 days. And we were comparing the difference. So what inherently you would expect in, again, back to nutrient dynamics. You have the same energy, uh, nutrient components in the roll down as you do in the incorporated. The difference is the incorporated, you would expect fast availability of nutrients, right? Nitrogen, et cetera. In the roll down, you would expect a slow decomposition of the mat, and you would expect a nutrient rebound uh, during the in the tissue analysis. So therefore, you would expect in the tissue analysis at the 32 day, you would have a higher nitrogen com uh, component in the in the leaves tissue analysis of the uh, non-incorporated. I mean, incorporated versus the non-incorporated, right? And of course, that's what we did see.
and the extruded sunflower pellet, besides the oil, is a wonderful source of protein for your animals, so you can line that up with your feed. Uh, we also did uh, see, uh, sunflower seal yields, and you can see the incorporated was almost twice what the non-incorporated was. Uh, this was probably the reason, you know, potentially because of the drought a year as well. Uh, we also did volumes for press of one pound of seed, and you can see the average was 330 for the incorporated, 296 for the this is mLs per uh, pound of seed expressed. The other important thing we did that emphasizes this is from a fuel component. So we did one of the first analyses of actual oils to determine uh, the efficacy of the oil for a fuel, because that's what we want it for. And interesting enough, uh, one other thing I should say is that the non-incorporated sunflowers bloom the week, week later than the it's probably because they didn't have as many nutrients. We did start getting more weed component in with the non-incorporated group versus, and you can see that the incorporated group bloomed the week before the non-incorporated group. You can see that there as well. Uh, they, they, they'll, they'll start drawing down, drawing down, we use a, a, a a row crop header, they're not very common anymore. It has the belt that pulls the sunflowers in so you don't have seed loss. Clean them, repress them, and you have extruded pellets. And then this is just an example of different oils. Sunflower oil is a very beautiful oil, um, high quality fuel. Canola is a good oil for fuel. Flax is not because it's very, very gummy and high and polyunsaturated. Camelina, which people are talking about, it's a, it's a nasty little seed, it's a tiny little seed to handle. I, I mean, I mean, sunflower seeds you can handle, and of course sunflowers. Uh, the con condition <coughs> conclusions, there's problems with some conditions that occur. Number one is we had a drought, uh, and that affected, I think, it showed an important thing that if you're gonna do a roll down and you have a drought a year, you may have to uh, provide some other way of providing uh, nutrients to your crop you're not going to get it from the, the map. Uh, the second thing is um, the drought did have an effect on lowering the fuel quality incorporated. I don't know. We found out that the fuel quality of the uh, uh, incorporated group uh, is it because it was sitting in the field an extra week? I don't know. But we had a lot of more changes in the fuel, a lot of more hydrolytic and destructive changes to the the fuel quality of the oil of the incorporated group, was it because I was waiting for the other week? Uh, we don't understand that, but I'll, I'll explain that real quick. Uh, one other thing I want to point out is um, the two bushel per acre of the rye was too low. It should be about three and a half bushel per acre to roll down so the mat would have been better. Um, the peas uh, is something that we have to focus on because we don't know uh, the why the peas didn't die are using a different variety. I'm actually going to play again with it this summer to even have a flatter, smoother bed to roll down and crush the peas. Uh, I already explained the, let's talk about fuel analysis. Uh, again, the fuel analysis of the vegetable oil, traditionally canola oil or rapeseed oil, the Germans have shown as probably your best oil value. So burning straight vegetable oil in a tractor or a thing versus making even making uh, biodiesel from that as well. Uh, the main thing you want is you don't want a really, really excessively high polyunsaturated uh, oil, um, like uh, flaxseed. You would want to use some or, or rapeseed canola oil. Um, in this study, though, we found that actually the non-incorporated seed oil was better, and it's because we were seeing a lot more diglycerides in the incorporated oils, uh, and that potentially could have been related to um, uh, there was some either some degradation of again oils or triglycerides and it was broken down to a diglyceride you can actually see it in the actual oil that would make a negative effect on your fuel but you could filter that out uh, there were some oxidative changes to the oils in the sense that there was a lot more again diglycerides and some other uh, types of higher acid compound and some salts that were involved in there and some water that was in the incorporated oils we can't really we can't really explain why that happened. There were some degraded changes in that oil versus the non-incorporated oil. 
Um, so the main scoop of the whole study was that you, if you plan in the drought of your your uh, non-incorporated group will have slow release of will have won't have the nutrient rebound. The the uh, sunflower oils we found that there was actually superior quality to the oil of a non-incorporated group, and we can't explain that why that would be. And um, sunflowers again are a wonderful crop. The only major problem is in production of these is birds, and we use again cannons to scare away the birds. Uh, and it's you have to combine the 10% of you on the field, and you use combine. You have to wait for that 10%. So real quick, this last year was horrible because we had rain, 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 and we're trying to do that in September, so you're waiting for a dry down period in September, and uh, it was a very difficult season because of the, the rain, racing between the rain and the dry down of the birds. is I use, uh, I'll do like two years of, of rye, and peas, sunflowers, and then I will, after the sunflowers, I will go right into, uh, uh, in the spring, I'll plant oats and hay, so then we have like about three years of hay then on that same field, and then we'll rotate it back into sunflowers again. So we generally go two years of sunflowers, roughly about oats as a nurse crop or a hay crop, and then we have about three years of hay, rotate back into the sunflower again. What, what's your hay crop? Hay crop is orchard and clover usually. And now in another way, you could have a, a, a legume hay field and you could plant into that without having dry. But if you know this, you can go right from your legume hay field right into a uh, field of, and I will do that. There's where you do your soil testing because you may have to do some more side dressing to meet your nutrient needs because uh, sunflowers need high potassium for a lot of the stalky growth that they have. And, and you're removing hay? Oh yeah. So you're taking off nutrients? Taking off nutrients, and then what we'll do is, uh, when we go into sunflowers, there's where we'll probably either use manure or possibly some like we'll side dress more along the sunflowers. If we don't do the rye and the peas prior to this next season, and sometimes we'll put the rye right in after the hay field, depending on what the hay field and the quality of the legume is in there in the fall, because we can put the rye in and then the peas in the March after the hay field. Depending on the quality of the hayfield. Yes. The hayfields, by the way, are manured every year. To worry. They're manured every year in the spring prior to, that's where I use my manure when I take the uh, hay off. Does that answer? No, I, I, I'm just asking you to find out rather than yeah. <laughs> measure the biomass. No, we didn't. Could have. So, uh, limitations of the study will be, but we're focusing on a lot of different. Well, my question is similar to crop rotation or history. Yeah, we generally in our farm go from sunflowers to hay, oats and hay, and hay, 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 and then 